Welcome to the Creating Wealth and Wellness Podcast. Your hosts, Amanda Kingsley and Tara Masildine, team up to take you on a journey where freedom is cultivated through personal development, where women connect to fuel their futures, and where wealth is created as a byproduct of being well. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Wealth and Wellness Podcast. Uh, this is Tara Misseldine, one of your co-hosts, and today you, lucky people, are going to get to know Amanda Kingsley, my co-host, a little bit better. Uh, last week, she actually interviewed me with some really awesomely fun questions that got me thinking and really made me realize how grateful I am for my life the way that it is. <laughs> And I can't wait to ask her these same questions. So hopefully you remember them. Hopefully you had a chance to jump on um, Facebook or the interwebs and let us know what you thought about those questions and your answers. But for now, it's time to jump in with Amanda and find out what hers are. So Amanda, are you there? I'm here. Hi. <laughs> okay. So I'm. Um, we figured it would be really important to let everybody know what your answers are to the same questions that you asked me. So I'm going to start in the same order and I would love for you to give us what a sneak peek into your daily life is. What's a day in the life of Amanda Kingsley? <laughs> I love it. And I, I'm giggling because I think it starts very differently than yours. <laughs> I think your answer was I'm a morning person. And my answer is <laughs> I'm not a morning person. <laughs> But fortunately, I have, so I have three beautiful children. Um, they are aged, well, 13 and 16. Wow. Teenager. Next Sunday, I'm going to have a teenager. Yes. So she's 13. We also have a 10-year-old daughter, and we have a three-year-old son. And of my three children, my middle is an early riser. So she, oh, she was that kind of kid who, no matter when she went to bed, she would wake up at the same time. It was like, it wasn't super crazy early, but it was... For me, I was like, ah, <laughs> I don't like morning. And both my parents are not really morning people either. We were all sleeper inners. <laughs> so I, I go there because my son is like that. He is an 11 hour sleeper. So if we go to bed at nine, he gets up at eight. If we go to bed at 10, he wakes up at nine. If we go to bed at seven, he wakes up at six. So we have been doing now it's some, as as we're recording this now, we're in summer. So my kids are out of school. He is not in school yet. Um, so we've been doing this amazing, just sleeping in and going to bed a little later than the school year would provide. But we're very slow in the morning. We just hang out in bed and snuggle. I get up. I'm not a, um, my house is, is tidy. But I'm not like the kind of person who has to go to bed with a clean house. So I often wake up and do like the tidying. And that feels really good for me. It feels like an active, productive way to start my day. Sipping coffee and kind of doing last night's dishes and that kind of stuff. I work from home. So it, that allows for that sort of kiddo sleeping in piece to happen really nicely. So when he... <laughs> He gets up at nine. I am, I, I'm right there with him. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say I get set an alarm and get out in bed and meditate. It does not happen. <laughs> I'm like, sleep. This is so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so our mornings are pretty slow. Yeah. Like pick up from the night before, kind of get things ready for the day. And yeah, like I said, I work from home. So that usually means some days he goes to my mom's. Um, it's summertime now. So in the school year, the kids go to school. But now um, sometimes they'll they'll watch him while I do some work calls or um, scheduling scheduled things that require um, my full attention. <laughs> mm -hmm. But mostly working at home means that my office is really in the bottom downstairs central of my house and my house goes in a circle. So it's really kind of both doors open. I'm at my desk and I do my work around my family. Don't nest. I'm actually looking forward to him starting preschool in the fall because it'll be much clearer like work time family time. Um, but at this point I've really run all, you know, any businesses that I've done, I've run around our family time. So our whole day really looks like, um, it's different every day. It's like, Oh, mommy has a call. 
and I'll be on for a half hour and then we go swimming or mommy has a call. I'll be on for a half hour and then we make muffins or mommy has the call and then I'll be on for a half hour and we'll go grocery shopping. So we have a very, but it's, it's really how I operate. Like I am not a structured person at all. (laughs) I am like, let's see what the day brings. Um, Maybe I'll write a blog post today. Maybe I'll save it for tomorrow. Maybe I will this. Uh, So we have a really fluid in and out kind of day. And that's what most of my days look like. So because I work from home, it can get a little tricky. Like where's family time? Where's work time? So I don't have, um, I don't have the office that I go to and leave everything behind. So I try and reserve like three to at least seven but I try and reserve three to eight because when they are in school, that's like they come home from school and then dinner prep and sports or anything like that. So I really work kind of nine to three and then whatever happens after eight o'clock. But the work that I do calls for some flexibility in evening. So I do do a lot of work at night with people and I'm a night owl. So I love that. I have training (laughs) calls at night. I meet new people at night. I have, it's really a lot of fun for me. So yeah, hubby does go to work 6.30 in the morning, so he's never here when we're sleeping in and wake up. <laughs> he's gone when we get up. He's also gone when the kids get up for school. So, um, And then he comes home. We do also do dinner together almost every night. And, and like you said, sometimes it's out on the deck. Sometimes it's um, snuggled up in the living room, but mostly it's around the dinner table, and we really – try and reserve that sort of afternoon evening time for, for really structured spending time together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, that's, that's what the normal everyday looks like. Yeah. So when three-year-old goes to bed, you're not going to bed. You're still. Gosh, no. (laughs) (laughs) I love, 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 love. I really think my brain functions best at night. Like I get all my aha ideas and, Um, I am passionate and excited and uh, yeah, I love working at night. I absolutely love it. Yes. I wake up in the morning and if someone asked me to like get on a call and sort of coach someone or just brainstorm or problem solve, I'm like not, my brain's not there, but for me (laughs) at night, all over it. So we have totally discovered yeah. the place where we are most polar opposite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really good to know when I suggest like, oh yeah, I could meet you like <laughs> before I go into the office. <laughs> you are not even like joined the land of the living yet. And yeah, when I'm no. able to get on a call at like 8.30 at night, I am like so fried. Yeah. Okay, so this is good to know about each other. All right, mm-hmm. so I want to jump into some, are, do you feel complete with the day? Yeah, I mean, it's a really, really fluid. I I don't necessarily believe in balance. So I, I, you know, the work-life balance, but I do. And I think we talked about this maybe on another podcast, but I, I do think we have sort of a nice balance of like, I really love that I can be, I can be working and they can run in with a, owie and I put a bandaid on, or I'm working when I get them off to, you know, I get them off to school and I'm working and I don't know. It's just really, fluid here like it kind of all works together so we have the chaos balanced pretty well (laughs) that is good a a chaotic life can be challenging or I know working from home home is really challenging for some people it's like well how do you do it when they're coming in and out all the time and I'm like well that's the beauty of it to me is that Mm -hmm. I'm here yeah. You know, so if something happens and they're upset about it or they want to celebrate with me, like I'm here and mm-hmm. I just step away and I do that. And the, I think what's awesome about the online world these days is that you can, right? If you read an email and then your kid comes in and needs help, you just step away and you come back to the email. Or if you're sending a message, even a text, it's like really easy to do that for me to just move between one and the other. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I've been curious what... Um, what differences there would be because I know you're mostly from home and my businesses are not from home. Yeah. Um, And also multiple children versus just one. So I've been curious to hear. It's interesting. And you know, people, 
the early years are definitely challenging, but I find parenting to get more complicated. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's like, yes, it's challenging to be waking up all night and changing diapers and potty training. And, you know, there's a lot of intensity in the Mm -hmm. early years, but the scheduling and the um, problem solving just gets, I think it's, actually more challenging as they get mm-hmm. older. It was much easier. I'm glad I started my business when my youngest was an infant, not when he was three, because I probably would have quit by now. It's, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> one of Aria's favorite new things to say to me whenever we like disagree on something or we're having a battle of wills, she looks at me and puts her hands on her hips and she says, mom, what is the point of you right now? <laughs> <laughs> It sounds so fresh, but but (laughs) it doesn't like feel, she doesn't mean it that fresh. (laughs) I'm not understanding right now. (laughs) I don't know why you're doing this. Let me have my way. Like, what is the point? That's so funny. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Oh, well, mine's not so lovely. Mine is. You're so mean. (laughs) That's my kid. So mean. So mine, mine makes me like have all of these existential like (laughs) wonderings because her one right before this was, Mom, you're making my choice gone. You're making my choice gone. <laughs> and I just don't even know what to say. Okay, so Amanda, what is your superpower? Um, well, gosh, I think part of my superpower is what I just said. Like, I'm a really good problem solver. Yeah. So I don't get, like, super stressed about, like, that didn't work. I'm mm-hmm. just like, oh, let's try it this way. So I'm not afraid to jump into things, and then I'm not afraid to – rearrange a gazillion times so people will often come to me and I'm like well why don't you try this and like I didn't think of that Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and that probably is why working from home works so well for me because I just like one minute to the next I'm just in a constant state of problem solving and I love that I don't get frustrated by that like I don't need super quiet structured time to do what I do um so yeah I I love of figuring stuff out. And and I would say my superpower can also be my fault because some people don't want their problem solved. And it's really <laughs> hard for me to not be like, why don't you try this? So that might be my weakness is that like, I want to solve everyone's problems because they know I'm good at it, but they don't all want their problem solved. So. Kryptonite, <laughs> unsolicited advice. <laughs> yeah, that might be my... <laughs> <laughs> that's my I don't know <laughs> all right and did you did you have a spirit animal that you wanted to well I think about? that's really funny because there's been a couple of times in my life where I've had like oh uh, this is this is gonna sound crazy um because <laughs> it's doing it right now and you probably are watching me swat away a fly <laughs> I I'm the kind of person who's always googling like spirit animals and mm-hmm. angel meanings and like all kinds of stuff like that because I don't fully understand it all but I believe in it so I'm always like well, what does that mean this is, like happened to me one other time where this fly like one fly and it's it like land in this way that it's like trying to tell me something versus <laughs> like oh my god the fly is back. <laughs> But it's really fun if you Google fly spirit animal. Oh my gosh, now I'm going to have to. Yeah, everyone's going to go Google. I do that a lot. Like if I'm driving and a deer runs across the road, I'm like, all right, what do you have to tell me? What do you want mm-hmm. me to know? Um, but awesome. yeah, I, I do listen to to messages, you know, the 1111s of the day and that kind of stuff. But I'm not, like I believe in it all. I'm not super... <laughs> not dogmatic about one or the other yeah yeah I think life is really fascinating and throw it all into the mix and get curious about it yeah yeah I agree I think that's our archetype showing though <laughs> <laughs> all right so this one I I really like um this was was fun for me to think about if money was no object what would you do all day Mm. Um, well, I think my answer is similar to what yours was last week, which is I wouldn't really change a lot. Like I love what I do. I love working from home. I love helping people. Um, I love meeting new people. I love problem solving. (laughs) Um, I love creation. I do a lot of creation in my work, but I do, I mean, I'll be honest. Like I love where my business is headed and I love 
the path that we've been on, but there's some financial stress in my life that definitely mm-hmm. impacts how we live. For instance, like even something like let's go to the museum. Well, with five people, you're talking about an, like a budgeted adventure, not just mm-hmm. let's go to the museum for the afternoon. Mm-hmm. But I think those are the kinds of things that will change for me when money is really when I feel so, and even as it's coming in, I'm like, okay, is this really happening? Are we staying here? So I still have like up in the air kind of questions. And when I know for sure things are set, like we've got a stream of multiple streams of steady income. Those are the kinds of things that will change. It's more like, let's go to the city for the weekend. Not if we go to the city for the weekend, we're running about a thousand bucks for like an adventure. So Again, like I just, I don't see it changing a lot. It's more like up leveling it all. I I love where we live. I could see moving, but I also could see not moving, um, travel, but the day to day would be very similar. It just would be like less stress about it. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. So kind of wrapping up that thought with the next question is, you know, a year, five years from now, what do you not want to be doing? Because I feel like these questions are really yeah. tied. I know. It's super interesting, isn't it? And it's a question we ask ourselves less, I think, than like, what do you want your life to look like? Like, that's pretty common in sort of like the coaching, entrepreneurial, um, personal development world. But we don't always ask ourselves, like, what do we not want it to look like? Yeah. Like, what do you want to stop doing? Yeah. What do you want to stop doing? Um. Well, I do want to stop stressing about money. (laughs) (laughs) It's a really good one. (laughs) Um, But I also, there are things that I think I will hire out. Like I will hire out like mom care and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. There are things that like, I look forward to having a VA and being like, can you get this up on the blog or can you enter that data? Or like, I do look forward to taking some of the things off the table that I know someone else could do really well and probably enjoy doing like and um so there are some things I do look forward to getting some help with in my business for sure um more of the day-to-day kind of finishing touches (laughs) Yeah. But as far as our family life, yeah, there are jobs that I want to not be doing, like like lawn care and maybe even cleaning. Maybe I need a cleaning company. Like, <laughs> for Sarah. You know, I don't mind the daily like dishes and laundry and that kind of stuff. But I think if I'm being honest with myself, that's the kind of thing I would I would probably hire out because it yeah. kind of weighs on me in a way. Um, well, speaking from experience. Though the financial awareness is still definitely there for me. I have many times had an assistant and I do right now and I very highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like those it's jumps really that awesome. people make that changes everything, but it's a really big jump to make. Yeah, it <laughs> is. You've never it is. had it. Until you've had it and then it's one that you need to make again and again if you don't have an assistant at any point. <laughs> yeah. I guess the other thing I want to not be doing, here's an honest answer for you. Um, I do because I have, because I'm still in the growing and getting to the momentum stage of my business, I do spend a lot of time like checking my phone or checking this. I do see that fly. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I'm going to have to Google it. I know the fly. So I do look forward to business having such a momentum that I'm checking less because I already see the difference in where I was three years ago, where I was now three years ago. I was like, someone sent me a message. What does it say? I can't wait to answer. And now I'm like, someone sent me a message. I'll get to it later. But I look forward to that increasing. So I'm not spending as much time like in momentum phase. I look forward to that. You're not building momentum, but more maintaining momentum. Yeah. Maintaining. Yeah. In, in structured Cool. That's a very good awareness. I like that one a lot. All right. So moving into our final question. Oh, and look at that. Oh my gosh. This is exactly what happened. Hi, Mara. Mara. <laughs> it did. Um, so if we are, when we are sitting right here a year from now on this podcast together, celebrating what a great year it's been for you, what does everything look like? Hmm. I guess it's kind of similar to 
some of the other answers. And then it doesn't look that different. It's very up leveled, right? It's like, I feel, I keep telling people, I feel like I'm on, I know I'm on the right track. It's just the speed at which it's going to happen. So I, I do feel like with him being in preschool and life feeling like a little more structured as far as like getting work done and then having those breaks, I do feel like this is going to be the year where there's a, a quicker moment, like a quicker shift. Um, whereas now I feel like I'm on the slow and steady path. Mm -hmm. And I think that the next year is going to be a shift in that direction where it's a little less slow and steady and more like, whoa, we're in it. Like, this yeah. is good. <laughs> this is really good. We made some quick progress. But I, he's been home and it's been awesome. And I do work a lot with, I'm the kind of person who will like set up the game in front of my desk and he plays and then I get down and I build a tower and then he knocks it over. And it's like, so we, we work together a lot. But um, I think having him in preschool is going to be a big shift. So I have a feeling next year is going to feel like, oh, that's what it, that was the thing I was waiting for. That like, mm -hmm. it took off. <laughs> <laughs> the I boom. had a few stages like that. But I think, I think next year is going to be a game changer. Yeah, I get the same feeling. Yeah. I feel like that. I, I can't wait for everybody to come along this journey with us because I feel like it's going to be this way for a lot of people. I know that last year was a very challenging year for a lot of people that I know, myself included. Mm. Um, and it was just one that like, you know, sort of knocked everything down and cleared canvases getting ready for what, you know, this, this immediate future was going to bring. So I can't wait to see what that is. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm really excited about this podcast journey and where it's headed. And just, I am, if you follow me on social media um, or anywhere, I am just all out there. So <laughs> I, I'm going to share the journey of what the year looks like with everybody in a really transparent way. Um, cool. and I'm excited to see what that looks like. And, and hopefully we can hear from our listeners what their journey looks like in the year as well. Yeah, like even if um, you, dear listener, <laughs> even if you could answer just one of these questions with us, I would love to know what we can celebrate with you a year from now. Mm. Um, putting that out there and letting this whole, like this current community and future community help you manifest that. Just imagine the boom that we can make for each other. It's really awesome. So even if you can only do that one, tell us what we can celebrate with you in a year. Here's one thing I want to celebrate in here. I'm going to say it out loud on air. There is a book that needs to be written yeah. and it will either be mostly written <clears throat> or written in a year that whoo, said whoo. it out loud. Whoo. Do it on air. We all heard it. <laughs> it's at the top of my to-do list. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah. So we'll have that mm -hmm. in the works. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda, as always. Um, next week, we intend to have a chat with you all about what gratitude and asking looks like to us. <clears throat> so please join us back here next week. Um, in the meantime, make sure you connect as always, and we will see you then. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for another episode. If you haven't already done so, please do us the honor of leaving a rating and review on iTunes. And check in with us on social. Amanda Kingsley is a work-from-home mother of three. Her mission is to free parents from financial stress so they can spend more time being present with their children. Learn more at her website, thewhyhive.com. Tara Masildine is a passionate entrepreneur, founding several businesses over the last 15 years. She's currently living the adventure of being a CEO, mom, and collaborative coach. Find her at allin.life.